Hello guys, welcome back to the CCNA video series brought to you by ABY Design and Tech. In this video, we're going to have a look at how to configure spanning tree protocol. So obviously we know what STP does, we know the different port roles, the different port states, then let's actually dive in and configure this feature on Cisco devices. Wait a minute, wait a minute, you're thinking, wait a minute Abda, I thought you told me that STP was already enabled. And that the default VLAN and VLAN 1 already had an STP topology. What's going on here? And you would be right. However, the problem is, is that STP, when left by its defaults, is not optimized. You have to remember that with STP, we have a central point of reference. And that all traffic or all switches look for the fastest point, the fastest path, sorry, to reach that center point of reference. If we don't configure or change any of the configuration with Spanish G protocol, it's not optimized. And that is the big issue. So we have to configure certain technologies, certain features to optimize Spanish G protocol so that we have control and rig the election so that we can dictate, okay, this switch is going to be the, the root bridge and that other switch that is going to be the secondary root bridge in case the primary root bridge goes out. We also want to configure a feature called port fast. So like I said, is that by default, any port when it goes from blocking into forwarding will take 30 seconds. Now you can understand that we need to be cautious when we are have links or switch up links to other switches. However, when we have um, links which go into end user devices, it just seems silly because a loop cannot occur. So Spanish root port fast sourced out, it allows a port to transition from the blocking state into the forwarding state instantly as long as that switch was that port doesn't receive or sorry that switch doesn't receive bpdus on that port and then obviously by optimizing spanish tree protocol it means that we can make better use of our redundant links we can have a separate stp topology per vlan making better use of our redundant links so some so so traffic for some vlans will flow over one link traffic for other vlans will flow over the other link so let's talk about the configuration steps so the main commands we're going to um, go over are going to be span and tree VLAN number root primary just configures to switch to become the root bridge and we'll see how that plays out span and tree VLAN number root secondary configures to switch to become the secondary root because obviously we need to have a backup plan so that if the primary if the primary root bridge fails we can have control over who becomes a secondary root bridge span and tree VLAN number priority value so we can hard code the spanning tree priority and essentially choose any multiple of 4096. Now you may be thinking, so what's the difference between root primary and priority? Don't worry, we'll we'll dive into that when we get to the command line. And then we have spanning tree port fast. So simply put, allows a port to transition from blocking into forwarding instantly. And obviously those would be enabled on edge ports which connect to your printers, your computers, your IP phones, you name it. So this is the STP topology that we're going to be working with. Switch 1, I want to configure as the root bridge for VLAN 10. Switch 3, the root bridge for VLAN 20. And then switch 2, I want to configure that to be the secondary for either VLAN. And you'll see the, and you'll see why we're doing this. You'll see that by having switch 1, the root bridge, we'll be utilizing these two links. By having switch 3 as the root bridge, we'll be utilizing this link as well. So that means... And then we can load balance our traffic over all of our redundant links. So I'm going to pause the video. And next time you see my screen, I will be at the command line interface or the console line, whatever you want to call it, of the Cisco switch. Welcome back, guys. So I'm now the console line of switch one. So first, let's assess the um, current STP topology. So I haven't changed anything yet. All I've done is obviously the links running between the switches are going to be trunk links. And I've obviously configured VLAN 10 and 20 prehand. So if I use the command show span entry, and I'm going to choose VLAN 10 now. So this gives us brief information, but shows us what the span tree topology looks like for VLAN 10. So as, as we can see, what does this say here? This bridge is root. So yeah, happy days. Um, this switch is the root bridge for VLAN 10. It shows us the priority of the root bridge, shows us the MAC address of the root bridge, and tells us a hello time, a max H time, and a forward delay time. These are obviously configurable values. And you can see here, priority, 3276A, system ID extension 10. So what the bridge priority is made out of, it consists of the bridge priority plus the VLAN number. This is what allows us, or this is how Cisco switches communicate STP information per VLAN. So this means is that let's say that we, um, so let's say that the root bridge um, is the same. Um, on the switch, obviously, for all VLANs. That means that I can communicate with, let's say, switch two and three, that 
this is the STP topology for VLAN 10, this is the STP topology for VLAN 20, by factoring in the VLAN number into the bridge priority calculation as well. So, we've got three interfaces, obviously this is a point-to-point -point A, so the disconnect to an edge port. These are point-to-point -point interfaces, they connect to switches. All happy days. So now, we do the show span entry VLAN 20 command, let's see what we have there. And as you can see, this bridge is the root, which obviously that shouldn't be the case. Switch 3 should be the root bridge. So let's go over to switch 3 very quickly. Switch, switch 3, show span entry VLAN 20. So now, let's see how that span entry root, root primary command works. So let's see exactly what it does. So if I go here, span entry VLAN 20 root primary. So what does that do? Show span entry VLAN 20, let's see what that does. And as you see, that is the root bridge. Okay, fantastic. So how does it work? So why did it choose 24, 5, 7, 6 as the bridge priority and not 4096 down? Well, the way that this root primary command works is that if the current root bridge has the bridge priority of 32768, then when I enter this command on the switch, on any other switch, it will change its bridge priority to 24576 by default. Now watch this, I'm going to go back on a switch one now, and I'm going to change that, so I'm going to say show, so, uh, sorry, not show, so conf t, conf t, I'm going to do spanning tree, VLAN 20, root primary, okay, show spanning tree, VLAN 20, so what does this do? Okay, so why did this go to 24576? Um, so obviously this is now the root bridge for VLAN 20, but why did this set the priority to 24576 and not 4096 lower than switch 3? The reason being because this switch has got the root bridge information for this VLAN 20 topology. And he knows, okay, the root, well the old root bridge, he had a um, priority of 24576, but my MAC address was numerically lower than that guy. So when I enter this command, it basically tells the switch that if the root bridge doesn't have the default priority value of of 32768a then either drop then either set your bridge priority value to be 4096 less than that current root bridge or if you have a lower mac address then set it to be the same bridge priority and this is what's done in that case now watch i want to go back to switch three and this will really hammer at home so i i use the command let's say use the command spanning tree vlan 20 we're going to go root we're going to go primary now watch this, show span entry, VLAN 20, and as you can see, it's set its bridge priority to 20,480. That's 4,096 less than what the bridge priority is set to on switch one. The reason being because he knows this guy's got the same bridge priority than me. He's got a MAC address which is numerically lower than mine. So if we have the same bridge priority, I will never win. The only way to beat this guy, the only way to beat this guy is by having a bridge priority which is numerically less than that guy. So now, the STP topology is all good, okay? Fantastic. So now, let's go over to switch two. Okay, so switch two. Actually, before I do that, let me go over to switch one quickly. Switch one. So if I do show span entry bridge, this will show you the bridge priority or the bridge ID um, for each of the STP topologies for this switch. As you can see, that's its bridge ID for the VLAN 10 STP topology. This is the bridge ID for the VLAN 20 STP topology. Okay, great. Its bridge priority is set to 24576. Now, I'm going to enter the span entry root secondary command on the switch 2. And you may be thinking, okay, Abdur, is that going to set the bridge priority to 24576, something lower? Wait and see. Wait and see, guys. So look, I'm going to switch 2 now. Span entry. Before I do that, actually, let me go control Z. Show span entry bridge. Again, it shows me the bridge ID for this switch for each VLAN that we have. Okay, brilliant. If I go span entry VLAN 20 root secondary what does this do so show span entry bridge okay he's like wait a minute it said it to 28672 this switch would never ever be the secondary root bridge for vlan 20 because switch one has got a lower bridge priority how become it didn't do what the other guys did when we did root primary so this is the reason being Every switch knows the bridge priority of the root bridge because that's what's included in the BPD and it stores the information obviously in, in memory so it holds the STP information in memory. Oh, however, what those switches don't know, switch 2 doesn't know that um, in its STP topology who has the second highest root bridge because it doesn't store that information. The only information it stores is 
um, its own root bridge and also the root the sorry its own bridge ID and also the bridge ID of the root bridge. So he doesn't know that switch one has got a lower bridge priority than twenty eight six seven two. So the the secondary command, no matter what the bridge priority of the primary is or what the bridge priority of the of any of the switches are, will always set the bridge priority to twenty eight six seven two. No matter what you do. So in this case, I will not become the root bridge or, or switch two will not become the root bridge if switch three fails. So the way to solve that is either we statically configure the bridge priority with this command. So in this case, let me do this. So we could do spreading tree VLAN 20 priority value and set the priority in increments of 4096. So what I'm going to do, I want to show you what the recommended method to use or what the, or the method that I would use. So let's go back to VLAN 20. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go um, spanning tree VLAN 20 priority zero. Now, what does that do? This essentially forces this root, this switch to be the root bridge. So no matter which or what switch you introduce into your environment, it will not become root bridge unless it also has a priority of zero and it has a lower MAC address. So if I want to change switch one's bridge priority to zero, it would become root bridge because it has a lower MAC address. But this stops you from accidentally introducing um, a another switch into your network which may have a bridge priority slightly lower than the default value it may be even lower than yours because this is the lowest value that you can get and so then what i would do i'll go over to switch two now i'll do span entry vlan 20 i'll go priority and i'll set that to 4096 which is the next highest increment this way if switch three goes down switch two is guaranteed to be the root bridge because it has a second highest bridge id Simples, okay, so just to, as, as a recap, spanning tree root primary, okay, set it to 24, 5, 7, 6. If there's a root bridge um, um, which already has a value other than the default of 32768, then set it to 4, lower, or set it to the same bridge priority if you have a lower macro address. And obviously, spanning tree root secondary, just set it to, to the, the 28672 number. It's literally as simple as that. So spanning tree topologies are now done. So lessons what we've done is um, we've got VLAN 10, the root bridge for, uh, sorry, switch one, the root bridge for VLAN 10, and we have switch three, the root bridge for VLAN 20. So the next thing we're gonna do is have a look at spanning tree pull fast. So if we go back to switch one, I choose the command show spanning tree, and we've got VLAN 10. It shows three connections. FA0 is for three that connects to my laptop. So the laptop that I'm doing, I'm doing this recording on, that's, that's what it plugs into. If I go to conf D, I go interface FA0 for 3. Uh, let's go do show run int FA0 for 3. Okay. If I issue the shutdown command and then issue the no shutdown command, let's see how this operates. Show span in tree. If I go VLAN 10, as you can see, okay, I wasn't I wasn't expecting that. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Oh, uh, so obviously before this video, I was messing around with some other configurations. I've configured poor fast default, okay? So let me just undo that. So if I go conf D, no span entry, poor fast default. Let's, let's do that again. So in effect, if there's three, shut down, and then no shut down. Show span entry VLAN 10. Let's see what happens now. And as you can see, it stopped identifying it as a point to point link. So if it is point to point edge, you know that that port has got port fast enabled on it because that's the only way that it would list port for that it would list point to point edge because it knows that if an interface has got port fast enabled on it, it must be an edge port because it must connect to an end user device. So you can see we're in listening, that's still again, we're going to be in the learning state and then we're eventually going to go to falling. Okay, so 30 seconds. However, port fast can either be enabled globally on the switch, which applies to all interfaces, and then we have to go and manually disable it on our trunk links, or we can enable it on a per interface basis. So let's do the per interface basis first. If I shut down this interface, and do span entry port fast, and do no shutdown. So because it's warning here, saying that if you enable it on ports which plug into other switches, you can have a loop, fair enough. So it warns you, so if you do, if you do ever make the mistake, it does warn you. No shutdown. Go control Z, show span in tree VLAN 10. Let's see the, the topology now and give it a second to come back up. And it's come into forwarding straight straight away unless it's point to point edge. Now, another way that we can see if a interface has got port fast enabled on it is to use this command. If I do show it, span in tree 
Bill and Ten in her face. And I just do FA zero times with three. If I do poor fast, I can see poor fast is enabled on the interface, and the interface is in VLAN 10. So that's all good information. If I do show span entry summary, let's see that. Show span entry summary. Okay. This will tell us whether um, extended system ID, which means that we add the VLAN number to the bridge priority. Yeah, that's, that's enabled. We can. I th I'm not too sure if we can actually turn that off or not. To be fair, it's, it's nothing that I really had an interest in doing. I don't see the benefit of it. Um, we have poor fast default that's enabled, poor fast BPD guard. So what BPD guard does, it's a feature that tells the switch to, that tells the switch that if you receive a BPD on an interface, to put the interface into what we call the error disable state. So that interface will no longer pass any traffic. And the whole idea is, is that we only configure poor fast on interfaces which connect to our end user devices. So we shouldn't be receiving BPDUs on those interfaces because if a poor fast enabled interface does receive a BPDU, it will go through the listening and learning state like normal. Then we have BPDU filter that stops the sending and also stops the processing of received BPDUs. Be careful with that because you can potentially cause a loop. And we have all annuals have loop guard as well. So, so loop guard default, if a switch picks up a loop, then it can automatically react and disable a link or inform you. Then we have uplink fast and backbone fast. Those are beyond the scope of this um, course. And essentially those are additional features that which we can enable with span entry to speed up the convergence process. So it also tells us, okay, how many ports we have forwarding per VLAN and which ports are active in the STP topology. So that's brilliant, okay? That's fantastic. So we've done that. So we've shown you port fast. Now what I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to show you guys the STP convergence process because obviously we saw that this can take 30 seconds or 50 seconds. And I think by, by demonstrating this to you on the switches, it will make much more sense. So looking at my topology, let's focus on VLAN 10 for the moment. Okay, so if I go to switch 2, I'll focus on VLAN 10. Switch 2. Um, let's show you span entry, VLAN so 10. Also, another one that you can use, uh, another command that you can use, if you use show span entry and then root. This command will show you the bridge ID of the root bridge per on a per VLAN basis. It will also show you what your root cost is to reach the root bridge. So if, if I do this command, I'll show you what I showed your root port as well. Show span entry VLAN 10. This command will also show you, okay, this is the bridge ID of the root bridge. This is your root port, okay? And this is the STP cost. Um, of this port and this will show you the actual entire cost to the root bridge so this shows you the stp cost assigned to this interface this shows you the entire cost to reach the root bridge the, the entire cost of this path to reach the root bridge so that's fine so let's leave it like that and if i do so that's designated so okay so let's go over to let me see what i'm gonna do so not that okay yeah so what I'll do, okay, let me go over to switch three, sorry. Just trying to, just trying to figure out, okay, so, yeah, okay, so switch three, switch three. Show span and tree villain 10. Show span and tree villain 10, let's see this. Okay, so it's a FA0 slash two, which connects to switch two, that's in the blocking state. Debug span and tree events. This is a good com command to essentially see what span and tree is doing. So in theory, what should happen is when I drop the link, FA0 slash one to switch one, switch three, should be able to react and make FA0-2 in uh, its root port because it, it will still be receiving BPD is listing switch one as the root bridge from switch two. So let's test this out. Conf T, if I go interface FA0-1 and we do shutdown, if I control Z that, and as you can see here, straight away, moved VLAN 10 is a new root port. The reason being because it's, it's continuously receiving BPDs from switch two every two seconds. Now this is another reason why on a blocking link, we have one side blocking, one side forwarding BPDs, is so that we can identify that once our primary link goes down, that there is another alternative to the root bridge, but also keeps that link in the blocking state because it knows that there are two paths to the root bridge. If I unblock one of these links, it's gonna cause complete and total mayhem. So as you can see here, it's moving into the listening state, where it's generating a topology change notification for VLAN 10. All that sort of good stuff. Moving to the learning state, then moving to the forwarding state. And as you can see, that took that took exactly thirty seconds, and you can see that from the timestamp. So okay, fantastic.
I'm going to bring up the interface now again quickly. So we've seen a drink link failure, and you can see this was 30 seconds recovery because Switch 3 was still receiving BPDs from Switch 2, listing Switch 1 as the rebroach. So let's do no shutdown command on that, bring that back up. Fantastic, and then we're going to move over to Switch 2. Let's see what's going on on this guy. So Switch 2, show span entry, VLAN 10. Yeah, we're focusing VLAN 10 only. Okay, just give it a second. I'll give that a few seconds for that to come up. Go back to switch three. Make sure that that is listed as the root bridge because that's a very important concept. So it's in learning mode now. Show span entry. Control Z show span entry VLAN. This is uh, VLAN 10, isn't it? VLAN 10, okay. Fantastic. So that's in the learning stage. Give it a few seconds. So as you can see, it identifies the poor roles. It's able to move FA0 2 straight away to the blocking state. But because it has to move FA0 1 into the forwarding state, we have to go through the mandatory listing and learning states. So that's forwarding now. Fantastic. Just exactly what we want. Go over to switch 2. If I do the command show span entry VLAN 10, let's see what's going on here. Okay. So at the moment, he is the only one. So on the link between switch 2 and switch 3, switch 2 is sending the BPDU, so he's not receiving any BPDUs over FA0 switch 2, meaning he doesn't know that an alternate port ex an, an alternate route exists via switch 3, because he's not receiving any BPDUs over that link, listing an alternative route. And this is very, very important, because effectively, when we put a port into the non-designated state, we essentially just forget that that port could be an alternate path to the root bridge. As far as spanning trees is considered, that just isn't a root port or a designated port. We know that it's included in the, in the STP topology, and because it's, um, oh, sorry, um, because it's a designated port, sorry, not non, not non designated, but because it's a designated port, okay, we know that we're forwarding BPDs, etc. But because we're not receiving any BPDs back, we don't know if an alternative path exists to the root bridge over this link. So now, if I go debug spanning tree events again. And we go conf t interface fa0 plus one. I'm going to shut this down. Okay, as you can see, setting a topology change notice on fa0 plus two, telling me that this link has gone down. So telling the other guys, and as you can see, that was a 41. And show span entry VLAN turn. And as you can see, he's still not root yet. And the reason being, because rem remember, span entry by default. It doesn't process inferior BPDs. It took 20 seconds. So if you look, if you if you go back up here, you can see when the topology change notification was sent at um, 5741, and you can see that he's after 20 seconds. He he has heard of a better rebridge. So between this 20 seconds, switch two is continuously sending BPDs over to switch three, listing itself as the rebridge. Now switch three doesn't buy this facade because he knows I know I should know about switch one. I know that he's a better root bridge, but I'm going to ignore you just purely because you're sending inferior BPDUs. I'm going to ignore you for 20 seconds. If I'm still hearing inferior BPDUs from you, then I'm going to essentially start forwarding you over um, the superior BPDU. So he starts forwarding him over this this superior BPDU, and then obviously he t he changes this port from designated into the root port. Now this port stays in the forwarding state. The reason being because it was already in the forwarding state. The reason why it takes fifty seconds for this whole um, essentially STP topology to converge. The reason being is because switch three, it's FA zero slash two port, which connects to this switch over here, switch two, has to move from blocking into listening into learning then into forwarding. So first of all, it takes 20 seconds for switch two to realize that there's a better root bridge. And then it takes an additional 30 seconds for switch three to move as fast ethernet zero slash two port into the forwarding state. And so, and so let's see that. So let's see that. If I go in FA's FA zero slash one, we do the no shot, actually before I do that, let me show you something. So I show you span entry VLAN 10. If I do this, as you can see, this is the STP cost of the interface. This is the overall cost to reach the root bridge via my current path. So as this interface, this is what the overall um, cost of the path is. Just thought I'd point that out to you guys. So interface FA01, let's go for the no shutdown command again. Okay, so we're gonna bring that back up. Show you span entry VLN 10. Let's see what's going on with span entry now. 
Okay, so as you can see, listing. So it's it's received a superior BPD because obviously switch one is forwarding over the BPDs because it's the root bridge. That's why the root bridge gets all designated ports because not only does the designated port also forward and also send and receive traffic, but it has the vital um, role of forwarding B of sending BPDs all over that link. So we're gonna wait for this to go into forwarding, then we're gonna do the whole process again because I just, I just want to show you guys that this isn't just me making stuff up, that switch three actually does go through listing and learning states on FA0 slash two. So let's imitate this again, in FA0 slash one, we do the shutdown command, okay, so we're bringing that down. And again, watch when it sends the TCN, wait 20 seconds and, and then it's gonna realize, wait a minute, I'm not the best guy in town, there's actually a better guy than me. So we give that a second. So 20 seconds, so it shouldn't be much longer. So that was 59, so we're looking at 19. So that's it, uh, another 19 more seconds. That's fine. Yeah, here it is, okay. So look, I've heard of a new root bridge. Going over to switch three now. And if I do show spanning tree VLAN 10, as you can see, yeah, you can see that, listening, learning, and then finally forwarding. So that's why it takes 50 seconds for this STP topology to converge because again 20 seconds for switch 3 to send over the superior BPD information to switch 2 and then 30 seconds for switch 3 to transition this port into the forwarding state. So that's, a, that's everything covered with spanning tree topology so obviously we've seen the difference between the three major commands. Um, what you can also do that if you want to influence the actual um, root bridge election, you can change things such as spanning tree cost, spanning tree priority. I encourage you guys to play around with that in your labs. This was just to show you kind of an overview of, of how we can change the topology and essentially influence it to select which root bridge we want, how we can configure the secondary. And also the most important thing is how the spanning and tree topology convergence process works. If you have enjoyed this content and would like to see more content like this, then please subscribe to my channel. If you found this video useful, then please share so that we can get high quality IT training to the masses free of charge. And thank you very much for watching.